back one more time for a championship week. It is Three Dog Thursday. So much to go over, so much to discuss. And look who's here with me if you're seeing us on video. I am the somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves. He is Gary Seegers of Winning Cures Everything and the Winning Cures shows and content and this site uh, that we are part of. Good to be back with you. We have been trying to make this work. I have been explaining away to the audience, as have you in different forms, social media, other shows. You've got the youngin, Murphy Jean. You've got your other son. You've got uh, work duties, actual nine to five work duties, and trying <laughs> to wedge in all the college football, et cetera. But it's good to be back with you, my friend, for Three Dog Thursday for Championship Saturday of college football, Gary Seegers. My brother from another mother. Oh. That's right. That's right. Yes, I am. Uh, I have returned for, uh, I guess this will be the the penultimate uh, Three Dog Thursday this Correct. year. And uh, yes, I mean, it's it's a blast. I, I have enjoyed listening to you. I have not gotten to join because the schedules just have yep. not worked yep. in my favor so far this year. But uh, but you know we're getting back to bowl season. We're getting ready. Yes, I'm I'm getting there. Uh, Murphy is tw- uh, this Sunday. She'll be twelve weeks old. <laughs> so three months. We, we um, have a three month close. old just in time oh, for the bowl season. Here we go. It's wild, absolutely oh. wild. Um, yes, it's just been mayhem. And just I have watched chaos. and I have watched your winning cures segments and your shows and also you and Parker and Kyle and everybody with the Bet US college football stuff. It's not as if we've been without Gary's takes and even Gary's takes on underdogs. It's just, it's just in, been a, in it's this mayhem. show in this <laughs> format we've not had Gary here. So I'm thrilled to have you. So let me just ask uh generally as we begin for this weekend, how amped are you like scale of 10? Are you a nine and nine and a half for what is about to unfold Friday night and Saturday as we basically play out who's in the college football playoff, who's in the New Year's Six bowl games, et cetera? How amped are you? Uh, we can put that at about a 9.5. Uh, it's, it's not the most amped that I have been, but it is pretty damn close. Yeah. Right. I am. I am stoked about these matchups. Uh, I want to see if Oregon is legitimately 10 points better than than Washington. Uh, I want to see about Alabama and Georgia because everybody assumes Georgia is, you know, just the best team in the country and it's not even close that they can flip a switch when they want to. Uh, I, I want to see about these G5 teams, right? Troy and App State is what we've seen from App State over the past month. Is that the real app or has it just been, you know, the competition has been a little eh? I, you know, I, I'm very curious about a lot of these and we got some rematches, but it's rematches that we want to see. So I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I think it's going to be a fantastic weekend. So many subplots and there's about seven, maybe even, I don't know, 10 different permutations. There's a big word on three dog Thursday of how this <laughs> could end up with what four teams uh, in what combination so there's a lot of fun of it with that. And and by the way, let me back up a step. Thank you for finding us on the Winning Cures Everything platforms, the Winning Cures YouTube page. Gary's a tremendous host. He hasn't evicted me yet off of Winning Cures. And also the Three Dog Thursday podcast, where if you're only hearing us in audio form, there is a video show. Come find it through Gary's platforms, winningcureseverything.com and the Winning Cures YouTube page. Uh, we've loved to have people uh, having people be engaged with us throughout the season, either by podcast or by video uh, with the audience. Now we should say, not not any concern of yours. Last week we came up short. Jason Powers and I swinging and missing. I, I swung and missed for an O for three last week, which has been rare. I think that's only happened one other time that this entire year. Powers did come through with one, and that was Iowa in the god awful game with Nebraska that hey, got the win. That was the only. In- the only underdog that won outright on Friday. Yeah, and, and so, there were only three of them that covered. Yeah, out, so on so Friday, the doggies, uh, the ten the, out of thirteen. Favorites. The doggies took it on the chin as well on rivalry Oof. Saturday, over and over and over yeah. again. If you were trying to back them, now I should say on the previous three shows because I've gone back in the calculations on the previous three shows, you were given eleven successful underdogs in three shows. So there is a standard here oh, that yes. we're trying to live up to. On Three Dog Thursday. So let's begin. I will begin first with a Friday night game, if you don't mind. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go right to that Washington-Oregon game. I am intrigued for the rematch. Washington won a fantastic regular season game in Seattle that either team could have won like twice in the fourth quarter of the game. And finally, Washington won it uh, with the last-minute touchdown. Revenge on the mind of the Ducks. 
Washington has played an awful lot of close games, including last week in the Apple Cup. Yet I look at this line at nine and a half, and I say that is too many points in a neutral site championship game for an unbeaten Washington team. I'm going right there to grab the points on Friday night uh, with the Washington Huskies. Give me some insight and analysis uh, here on this. I don't think you're joining with me, but give me I'm, some insight on what you think happens. It, so this thing got to 10, and I put just, I mean, not I wouldn't even call it pizza money on on 10, right? I just I put just a little bit on there just to have something going on on Friday night. Uh, but it's only my only thing is that I love the coaching matchup, right? Kalen DeBoer has only been a dog twice uh, at Washington, and he's won both games outright. Uh, one was just a couple weeks ago against Oregon State. The other was last year on the road at Oregon. They were 12 point dogs, and they won the game 37 to 34. That Oregon team's a little different than this year. Uh, Oregon, of course, went to Seattle and got beat. But this Washington, I mean, these two teams have gone in completely different directions since that ball game. Uh, Washington, a bunch of single-digit wins. Uh, they do have one, you know, they won by 10 against USC. Oregon beat them by nine. It, it's neither here nor there. Uh, there's something weird about what is going on with Washington. Uh, Michael Penix, what the way that the end of that game was, they've said for like five straight weeks that he's had flu-like symptoms or he's been feeling under the weather or whatever. Mm. Uh, so that's that's a little weird. Um, but at the same Is time... Is some like of he, it playing down to the level of competition? I mean, Lord, you had to be jacked yeah. for the Apple Cup. It may be the last Apple Cup for the foreseeable future, and you had it at home. How do you not but, get up for that game? Thing. But is it playing down a little bit to who you're playing last previously? Year, last year in the Apple Cup, they beat them by three touchdowns. That was a significantly better version of Washington State than what you got this year. Right. I, I, I can't tell. I mean, I think maybe some of it is playing down to the level of competition. Um, I I think that would be the biggest sell here, right? Is, all right, Washington's going to be amped up for this one. They got through Oregon. They thought they could just sleepwalk through everybody else, and they did. I mean, they got through the schedule undefeated. Uh, first Pac-12 team to do that in the in the Pac-12 era with, with 10 schools. Uh, I I wonder... Nine and a half is crazy, right? Right. I mean, and it got to 10 last night, immediate buyback on Washington from a lot of people, hence why it's consensus nine and a half across the board. But man, when you start diving into these numbers, there is a reason why mm -hmm. Oregon is favored by this much. Give me a couple. Uh, Give me a couple I, quickly. Okay. Uh, defense, for sure. Uh, Oregon is number 20 in a defensive PPA per drive over the last month of the season. Washington's defense is number 105 mm. in that metric. Uh, just bad. Oregon's offense is number one in PPA per drive, going against that number 105 defense. Uh, Washington's offense is number 23, so they have actually declined a little bit uh, in PPA per drive, so predicted points added per drive. Um, Washington's success rate is number 16 in the country over the past month, but they're, I mean, it's number 33 as far as their passing offense. Uh, the running offense has actually been pretty good for them, but there's, I mean, Oregon's number eight in defensive success rate. They're number two in offensive success rate. Uh, net points per drive, you got Oregon number one and Washington number 41. Are you trying to talk me out of my Washington three-dog Thursday plus nine and a half, so, Gary Seegers? So here, I'm I'm actually not because I still think that the line is absurd, right? You have a undefeated, you know, Pac-12 team that is in a conference championship game that has already With an beaten, electric Heisman Trophy yes. quarterback. That, that, no that's already beaten this team bit, twice but yes, in the last so, two years. So, yeah, it just surprises me that the number is that big, even if you think Oregon's going to win the game. I agree yes. with you. Yes, uh, but I, I will say coaching, right? Kalen DeBoer, it, his overall coaching record is 102-11. and 11. Like, he was winning a national championship in the NAIA when Dan Lanning was still coached, or when he was still playing ball. Like, there's there's something to that. Uh, Lanning sure. was really aggressive the last time out. Uh, went 0 for 3 on fourth down. Probably yes. some seconds of points at certain and points. Even, and, and even early in the game and then even late in the game when it was like, take the field goal. You don't know if the field goal is yes. going to matter for a field goal for the win. And he, and he went for it. So, 
I agree with you, coaching advantage too. So there's a lot to like here. Again, this is Friday night before the barrage on Saturday. Doggy one is Washington State from me on three dog Thursday. So let's move on to Saturday. And are you going to go right away to the early game in Arlington, Texas, where the Oklahoma State Cowboys played their way in in a dramatic, crazy game, come from behind uh, finisher at home, with BYU, still doesn't seem right that Oklahoma and Oklahoma State won't be playing the Bedlam game as the final game, but you got to get used to it. They played a few weeks ago, and it's Oki State and BYU to finish the season. But anyway, Oklahoma State came from behind. They won the game. They got in the title game. This game, 11 a.m. local time. Texas, talk about favorite. Texas, a massive 15 or 15 and a half point favorite, depending on where you look midweek. Gary, what do you think? So I see a 15 and a half. Uh, there's also a 14 and a half if you do like Texas. Uh, the numbers would tell you that Texas is the right side, right? Uh, there's there's not a lot that, that I can come up with as far as stats go to sell you on Oklahoma State. Oh, I can come up with a couple but, of them if you're ready because I think I, I may be yes, joining you hand in hand. But go ahead. Give me so, a couple of so, stats that scare you about Texas. It, oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Oh, Texas uh, running the ball uh, significantly better than um, – than Oklahoma State's defense, uh, throwing the ball even. I mean, they're number 77 in PPA per pass over the past uh, four weeks. Yeah, over the past four weeks, number 77 PPA per pass, but Oklahoma State's defense is number 97 in that metric. Uh, there's there's a lot that kind of points you in the right direction. Uh, Oklahoma State, Ollie Gordon, you know, yep. everybody loves him. He was the guy that kind of spearheaded uh, that, that movement in the middle of the season to kind of get them on track. Uh, they've not been able to run in the past four weeks. They're number 123 PPA per rush. Uh, if they try to run it here, number four PPA per rush defense is Texas. So so I'm selling the Texas side right now. Now. I'm taking Oklahoma State, though. Let me assist you in in okay. in persuading you, because I knew you were already going there. I know you I know you were looking strongly at this. Oklahoma State, in their last six situations as an underdog, Five and one ATS and five and one straight up. That bodes well. Mike Gundy's hey, been even, rallying even further them. back than that. Yeah, I can give you the even more numbers. 20 beyond and beyond seven. the last six. Give yes. me give me beyond 20, the last six. Twenty and seven with Gundy against the spread as an underdog is Gundy, and and it's not like he piled them up a long time ago. Uh, they are eleven and four against the spread in the last three seasons as an underdog. They are really good. And he's got a couple a, of outright wins against who the Longhorns in that scenario. And I think, oh, yeah. I think this is perfect. Rally them around. I don't know that they can win the game, Gary, but that is just too many points at beyond two touchdowns for a team that's been very good against the number that can run the ball, neutral field, early game, wild things happen in this Big 12 game early and have for the last few years. Last chance to kick Texas in the teeth because they're gone oh, yeah. to the SEC. There's so many things. Like Brett Yormark, is he going to visit the commissioner? Is he going to visit the Oklahoma State locker room about an hour before the game and say, I really, 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 really don't want to be up on a podium with Steve Sarkeesian and the uh, Texas brass handing them a trophy, boys. Come on. Help me. At help 100%. me. Help me that we don't want that. Gary, final thought on this. Uh, Oklahoma State has had – just massive success against Texas, right? They're six and two straight up in the last eight, six Ooh. and two against the spread. Uh, they are they are fantastic, and I want to say that uh, Sark has not beaten Oklahoma State. I, I want to say that. Let me let me double. We can check double it. check that, but it's uh, he's only um, been there what like three seasons or four seasons, so uh, yeah, yes. it, it, it's not much. So I, well, it's only I think uh, in the last two years, and maybe he won in the first year, uh, but I think Oklahoma State's won the last two. Uh, but that's the that's the deal. Right? It's, uh, yes, Oklahoma State has won the last two. 41-34 last year in Stillwater and 32-24 in Austin the year before that. Uh, the, in, in the first year, nope, sorry, 2020 was, okay, so this is the third year, and they haven't played yet this year. So 2021 Correct. and 2022. Correct. So Correct. no, Sark has not beaten Oklahoma State yet. Um, All right. That's something to consider. Lots here. of Mike things Gundy in our favor. And you and I are in agreement here. We will both take this. And let me and let me disclaim another way here that we've always done this with this show when we get to Championship Saturday. Because there are only nine FBS games, 
you're not obligated me or the other prognosticator that's with me in this case it's gary to pick three of them because that's roughly 33 percent of the games it's like on a typical saturday taking 20 underdogs instead of instead yes. of three so that's wild so i'm joining in here and i've got to say to the audience i'm now going to sit back and just listen to gary on on what the next two are but you and i are in agreement on pokes to get this done, and again, there are a lot of people around the Big 12 footprint that would love to see Oklahoma State deny Texas. They already beat Oklahoma in the final matchup of Bedlam, at least for a while. It looks like, can they deny Texas the Big 12 title? I don't know that they can win the game, but 15 and a half just seems too much. You and I in agreement, all right? So again, gonna need, uh, gonna need Alan Bowman to play really, really well because that's where Texas is vulnerable, right? That passing defense, uh, gonna have to throw it. Take advantage throw of it to beat them. Take advantage uh, of it. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to the tilt that I think all eyes are on, uh, especially if you are Washington having won on Friday night. If you're Florida State ready to play later on Saturday night, you are watching anxiously with what's going to happen, Georgia and Alabama, because specifically we've seen this movie before, Gary, a couple of years ago where Alabama came in on the outside looking in, basically, upset Georgia and took a playoff spot by doing it. Tell me more about the SEC title game in Atlanta, and do you like the Tide as the pooch? I do like the Tide Ooh. as the pooch. Uh, and here, here is, I mean, there's a lot that's similar between this year and 2021, right? Alabama comes in with a loss. Uh, they haven't looked good in certain spots. Everybody knows Georgia is just this behemoth. They turn it on when they want to, et cetera. Um, but over the past month of the season, and granted, this is opponent adjusted, it would be a little different if you're just looking at, you know, raw stats and whatnot. But uh, I've got Bama favored based on stats over the last mm. four weeks of the season. Uh, Georgia cannot stop the rush. Now, Alabama showed last week if you run a bunch of misdirection and whatnot, uh, you can absolutely run the ball on Alabama. LSU showed if you got a mobile quarterback. You can absolutely run the ball on Alabama. Carson Beck is not a mobile quarterback. Like right. He's not going to run like Jalen Daniels. Uh, it, he's He can throw the ball for sure, but Alabama's defense, number nine in PPA per pass allowed over the past four weeks. Uh, they're number nine in pass success allowed. Like they, they match up well against this Georgia passing offense. They're not great against the run, but again, these are more pro-style rushing attacks from both teams. These two teams know each other incredibly well. Like, they know exactly what the other one wants to do. The only one that has really changed what they're doing on offense is Alabama, right? Tommy Reese came in. You've got a mobile quarterback. Mobile quarterbacks have gotten, they have given Georgia some problems uh, so far this year. I, that's that's where I'm really seeing it. There are ways that Alabama can attack this Georgia defense. And if you just want to get weird... 2021, Alabama needed a miracle in the Iron Bowl to come back and win that game leading into this game, and it affected the spread drastically. And Georgia was a three-and-a-half-point favorite when this thing opened last week. So before uh, the Iron Bowl, and then uh, after the Iron Bowl, this thing skyrocketed. It's six-and-a-half at some spots now. Uh, everybody saw, oh, they struggled with Auburn. To, this same Georgia team struggled at Auburn. Right. Now, granted, it was a six weeks ago, eight weeks, whatever it was. It's the same situation. They struggled with that Auburn team. Um, it, it, there's also other things at play, right? If we talk about the Jordan Hare voodoo, you know, juju, yes. whatever. Yes. Um, Alabama, since they lost to Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow in that 2008 SEC championship game, they are 16 and 0 straight up in the city of Atlanta. So, <laughs> you know, and, and several of those have been Dang. against Georgia. Take that on at your own risk. I love that stat. I may repeat that, and I'll credit you. <laughs> 16 straight wins in Atlanta, including bowl games, pre-conference, pre right? Pre-conference, yeah. huge showdowns, uh, et cetera. National title game. I was right there in the Georgia Dome for the uh, Tua coming out, bombed the Devontae Smith, freshman to freshman in the overtime against Georgia. Um, all right, so there's a lot of meat on the bone there. Again, what a wild finish on the on the Milro miracle, the fourth and thirty-one pass. I was in my fourth hotel room. Oh. I was in my hotel room in Indianapolis, Indiana, doing other work, watching three games at once, and I yelled out 
I'll even say the floor. I was on the 19th floor. I think the whole 19th floor of the Indianapolis <laughs> Hotel heard me yell out just like most of America did that was watching that game. Let's see if we get a replay. Quick comment from you because we need to move along. Do you believe Alabama wins? That secures them a playoff spot. Nothing else needed. Or do you have a different ver version of that? Alabama needs help. Even if they do win, what is your thought there? I am 80-20 that it won't matter, right? 80%, I think Alabama is 100% in if they beat Georgia. 20% of me goes, yeah, but you can't put them in over Texas. And if you've had Oregon and Ohio State ranked above Texas this week, then... I just say know, this. I mean, this is changes? a win. This is a win. What changes it is, is a win over the number one team in the country on a neutral field yes. is what would change it. Texas yes. beating Oklahoma State is not the same thing. And the whole head-to-head -head thing, it only has bearing if everything is equal between the two teams. And the big, we're biased, but the Big 12 is not the SEC. So no. I understand and, in and the Lone Star like State. And it's not Texas dominated, right? I, right? That's the other well, part. But I, no. I don't even care about dominated. I, they did win the game. I know all the horns. I know all the people in the Lone Star State. I know all the Texas fans. They're, they're screaming over and over and over again, we beat Alabama head-to-head, -head, but there's more to it than that. There's a tougher conference that Alabama has played in that includes LSU, that includes Ole Miss, that includes Tennessee, teams that Georgia played also. And if Alabama gets the head-to-head -head win and they're the champion of the league, I don't even think it's 80, brother. I think they're in, and they're taking it's, a spot from somebody. You might now be it's right. a matter of who it is. Now is it's a matter is it of Texas it. or is it Oregon, right? We didn't even talk about Oregon, but their strength of schedule is... Yeah, but I mean, let's right. be honest. Let's be honest. All right. Michigan's going to roll Iowa. We don't even really need to talk about that game. They're going to destroy them. Iowa has no yes. offense. So they're undefeated. They're in. If Washington wins, if Florida State wins, there's the other th other two with the argument, along with Michigan, of we're the three undefeated teams sitting here. So now Georgia, under our scenario, takes a loss. A Alabama, I believe, takes a spot, and it's probably Georgia taking the other spot from either Washington or Florida State. That becomes a debate. I do I don't not think see. Gets in. I, I don't. If they see lose, a, I don't think Georgia's. In. I don't see a scenario where the number one team loses on a neutral field in a close game. Will be my one qualifier, and is all the way out. They weren't all the way out two years ago. So agreed, but the we'll options see. were limited a couple right. of years ago, okay. and the issue Fair now enough. is. Okay, it, say Georgia drops back to four or five, whatever, they would not be a conference champ. You've got a lot Truthful. of options. And then if Texas and stuff. then if Texas is and if Oregon is, I understand that. I paint my scenario one more time. Michigan is undefeated, Florida State is undefeated, Washington is undefeated. They've all won their league. They're all undefeated. Who does Georgia bop if they knock somebody out? Are they knocking Florida State out, in your opinion, yes. under my hypothetical? They're knocking Florida State out yes. if that's the case. I that's what I believe. So if you're a Knoll fan, you better root for the dogs. You better root for the dogs to take Alabama out because that 100%. helps you control your own destiny if that's the case. All right, so speaking of Florida State, are we going there for Three Dog Thursday? Oh, yes. L you are aware Louisville oh, lost yes. at, at home uh, to Kentucky uh, yes. last week. Now Louisville, Louisville getting a couple of points, two, two and a half, and you're looking right at them for Three Dog Thursday, Gary Seegers. On the Winning Cures uh, platforms here and on the podcast, you're looking right at him in the ACC title game in Charlotte. Tell me why. I think Jeff Brom wins the game outright. Uh, that game against Kentucky was a little bit screwy. They had three turnovers, two of them inside their own 40-yard line. They gave up a kick return touchdown. That kind of stuff, not super replicable. Uh, when you start diving into numbers between these two teams, Florida State, what the, the way that they were able to score on Florida – is they had broken plays, missed assignments, et cetera. That Florida defense, that Florida defense is terrible. This Louisville defense is not terrible. They were number 30 in PPA per drive over the past month of the season, and that's just raw stats against Miami, against Kentucky, et cetera, right? They have played really, really good football. Uh, at Louisville, number 23 in predicted points added margin in the past four weeks. Florida State is number 31. This Florida State offense, even before... Jordan Travis went out. They were not looking great. They are number 121 in predicted points added per rush in that span in the past four weeks. Uh, they have issues, right? If they can't break a big play, if they can't break a tackle, uh, that's the issue, right? And I, I said this on the BetUS show. Uh, I believe that Florida is number 111, or it's not either 111 or 117 in tackle grade at PFF. Louisville is number 44. 
Hmm. They don't miss a lot of tackles. Florida State's going to have trouble with that. Uh, I, I think I think you're looking at a lower scoring game. Uh, this Louisville offense is not outstanding. They're not great. They're going to have trouble with this Florida State defense. But you know that Jeff Brom is going to have something dialed up here. I think Louisville wins this game outright. I got, mm. I really believe that they are the better team. Well, look, Florida so State, long as Jordan Travis in there. Sure, Florida State floundered. Uh, they ran the ball well enough against Florida to get them the lead, and then they hung on with their defense, and that was but on the road. Then, even then, and I know it was on the road, rivalry game, we can talk about weird stuff, whatever. They were 4 out of 14 on third downs against a terrible Florida defense, and they only had 3.9 yards per play. Mm. Like, but they, the argument is they won the game. Will the community committee view them differently here in a in a head to head against Washington, for example? If it's down to both for one spot with with Travis out of there, it's definitely a controversy. Uh, we'll see how they view them. You don't even think it's going to be a controversy, though. I heard you say Louisville outright to hand Louisville Florida State outright. the loss and deny that and deny them. And again, in the chronology here, that will be the last game on Saturday night, along with the Michigan-Iowa game. But the Michigan-Iowa game starts just after 8 Eastern time, and it will not be in doubt after about 8.25 Eastern time. So don't worry this about is, Michigan yeah, This will have Iowa. the eyeballs. This, this, will, this game will matter the most, and that's where Washington will be rooting like crazy if they have won or if Oregon has won and Texas has won and Alabama has won. They're going to be rooting like crazy for your Louisville pick in this scenario. Right. Hand a loss to Florida State in the ACC title game that's coming up on Saturday. All right, a couple of moments left here on Three Dog Thursday. Do you agree with me? I want this to be organic. I put my opinion out there. I don't think you've heard it. But I, do you agree with me about the end? I, I, you know what? I won't even taint you. Do you believe that with a 12-team playoff coming next year that there's going to be less excitement at the end of the year, final rivalry Saturday and championship Saturday. Do you believe that to be the case, that there will be less excitement? Because all of these teams pretty much that we've been talking about already would know that they're in going into the championship game. It's a matter of who you're playing and if you have a bye. What say you real quick? I would say that I, I believe there will be actually more excitement and here's here's my reasoning for this there are some of these games where you already know both teams are in michigan ohio state uh you know alabama probably would be in against yes. auburn like in a situation like this year but if they lose that game to auburn and then they turn around and lose to georgia then you all of a sudden you got three losses right all of a sudden the egg bowl means more missouri arkansas means more leading into that game right there's there's a lot more games that mean a whole lot more and that's where i think you get the excitement you know kind of ramped up in certain spots because this past weekend everybody was focusing on the game and the iron bowl and these certain specific spots right washington washington state uh which i mean you had a 17 point favorite there that it came down to a game-winning field goal there's, that's right there's a lot on the line but you also there's still a bunch of stakes right you're you're looking for a first round buy uh, you're trying to get home field advantage, right? There's there's a lot more things at play, and the teams that are further back, like I guess if you're fighting for a New Year's Six Bowl, like Missouri was amped up to play against Arkansas, uh, Ole Miss against Mississippi State, it, same thing. I mean, you, you got Penn State going. All of them won like they were supposed to. I just think that the narrative around the games will be different when there are more spots open right and again i'll repeat what i have said before and even said on this three dog thursday podcast last week it is the destruction of the end of the regular season in that from last weekend alabama already knew they were in a 12 team playoff uh the same the same thing with washington the same thing with florida state they were not going to drop all the way out of the top 12 with a singular loss. Now, if you lose twice, like you said, but a singular loss last week would not have knocked them out, and it won't knock them out this weekend. Again, in any of these scenarios, Alabama, Georgia, they're both in a 12-team playoff. Now, it doesn't mean that much. Potentially. The same, the same thing know, with – Again, if they, Alabama's got three losses, and one of well, them is no, to a, I mean, you know, to this point now, they have one loss on correct. this scenario this year. They will not drop beyond 12, even with a loss to Georgia. Watch. It won't happen. True. Washington – and Oregon, they both know they're in. Here's right another now. part, though. Here's another one. ACC championship game. All of a sudden, Louisville is going for a playoff spot, right? And in a top four or five seed. Maybe. Uh, you look, 
Maybe because they might uh, they might put a couple of other teams in. I don't know. ACC champion might matter. They could three loss but, Mike Gundy. But again, if, for a playoff, if, like, I've always been bit better on this. Less is more, and it creates I more agree. drama. And now we've gone over the top with let's have eleven playoff games, not three, and it will eventually become sixteen teams and fifteen playoff games, not three. And the only thing that will be remembered is what happens in the playoff. You're not going to remember these epic games at the end of the regular season or in the championship game of a conference, because you still got to win three or four more times to do anything. Come, come I, I think I agree with you on this. Right. I, I will tell you this. I we're, We've already gone to 12, and it'll eventually go to 16, right? And did I think that we needed to expand? Part of me thought, yeah, we probably need more spots, but I was much more a fan of the uh, six-team idea amen the eight team idea no the right? six you and i both agree the six let three play yeah. six let play four play five the first two earn a buy let's go at it from that angle on now now if it's not good enough to make absolutely sure with four then make absolutely sure with six these are the best teams playing for the final two spots to play for the championship i would have liked it with six yes. but we've we've now gotten to the point and again i don't believe it's an if when you've destroyed the interest in the end of the regular season and the championship games and the, and the ratings are going to take somewhat of a hit, not completely, and when you have bored everybody to death with the first round of playoff games that are likely to be one-sided, don't come crying to me. And Gary knows this. I'm not directing it at him. Well, don't come crying to thing. me with what you did. Will they be one-sided, though? Because you're talking about... Most, you know, most it, of them, I think, yes, will probably be them, one-sided in the, in the, in the opening round. certainly... Uh, but a lot, I mean, you're talking five versus 12, uh, six, 11, seven, right, right. 10 and eight, nine. So right. you've got closer matchups there. I think Allegedly. we're just going to get, yeah. Once you move into those top four seeds, then I think it starts to really get out of hand and you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm we, certain we shall. We'll That's there, for but... years and shows to still come. <laughs> uh, by the way, I need to make mention because I haven't done it as of yet. If you're looking to get into any of these championship games from Atlanta to Las Vegas, to Indianapolis, to Arlington, any of them, anywhere, our friends at ticket smarter, the ticket smarter mobile app. One more time, utilize them. They've got the best, most competitive prices on the secondary market. They've got a tremendous uh, algorithm that will keep you right in line with what is the best price, the best get in price. And again, your purchase is safe and secure and use our promo code right now for all these games. The price is so jacked to get into most of the biggest ones. Just use the promo code WCE 20. You can take $10 off with WCE 10, take 10 bucks off with WCE 10 at ticketsmarter.com, but take the 20 off an order of $300 or more. You're not getting in the Georgia dome for one of the best seats. Gary, you know, this you're not getting into Arlington stadium for Texas, AT&T stadium for Texas, Oklahoma state for anything under 300 bucks for the best seats down low, the best seats use W. WCE 20, take 20 bucks off, Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app. You can sign up in a couple of minutes. Again, take advantage. WCE 20 is the promo code. $300 or more, save 20 bucks with Ticket Smarter. Get in the game with Ticket Smarter. Think Smarter, Ticket Smarter. Uh, anything else? Do you want to touch on any of the other games that intrigue you? Again, I only took two underdogs in summation. You have one jointly with me and two other ones. We'll recap that in a second. Anything else on the championship weekend that strikes you quickly? Uh, let's see. I'm interested in New Mexico State and Liberty just a little bit on Friday night. Uh, Liberty at home. Liberty is undefeated. Right. I just uh, New Mexico State has been the darling uh, over the past however many weeks since they since they lost to Liberty in week two. Mm -hmm. They have gone undefeated against the spread the rest of the way. Wow, uh, it's pretty pretty wild. Um, I am and we kinda... should clarify, this is a Liberty home game. Conference USA yes. plays it at home sites. Liberty is favored by double figures. One other note, because I've worked the Conference USA championship football game previous times on national radio for tune in. These are two brand new teams in the conference, and they're yes. playing for the title in Lynchburg, Gary, just to follow it up one they, more time. Uh, they were both independents before this. As a matter of fact, these two had trouble scheduling games in 2018, 2019, and they played each other home and home both of those years. So they played four times between the 2020, or excuse me, 2018 and 2019 right. season. Right. So they are they are familiar with each other. We'll uh, we'll say that UNLV Boise State. Uh, Boise looks like they are a better team without Andy. But Apples. they fired their coach. 
and, and, a, com- and, a, computer, game and, and a computer gave us this game for That's Allegiant wild. Stadium in Las Vegas. It's crazy. A computer U- spit out game. Boise State and UNLV. Yep, ugliest game of the weekend uh, could be Tulane and SMU. Looks like there's going to be thunderstorms uh, down at Yulman Stadium in uh, in New Orleans. Again, I, that's a home site game yes. for Tulane outdoors. To your point, yes. Uh, SMU's quarterback out for that one. Uh, Tulane's offense not very good this year. That, that one could that could be kind of ugly. Uh, who knows? Yeah, and then I mean, does, I guess the biggest question of the night, aside from whether or not Louisville is going to knock off Florida State, would be whether or not Iowa scores any points. Right, <laughs> the, uh, their team all. total uh, for both halves, first half and second half, is half a point at like minus one fifteen. Oh, my God! So, do they even score on Michigan? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it is interesting that Michigan's favored by over twenty, and the over under was like thirty something. So that yeah, tells 35. you that everybody believes Michigan's going to win something like, or at least the odds makers think thirty one nothing. But it's something Pretty like much. that, or twenty be exactly twenty eight three, was. or twenty eight yeah. three, something like that. All right. Uh, we've given you a bunch by means of recap. Here we go. I'm on Washington Friday night, Pac-12 title game. Too many points in that one for Three Dog Thursday. Gary and I agree with Oklahoma State. Speaking of too many points, 15 and a half in the game at 11 a.m. local time, noon Eastern time, AT&T Stadium in Dallas with Texas. Texas probably wins, but some great numbers that you've gotten uh, here on this program about why Oklahoma State's so good as an underdog and should contend. You'll go ahead and take Alabama and the six and a half head to head with Georgia. I just don't know that history repeats two years later, but you'll say roll tide. And you also have Louisville outright to deny Florida State the college football playoff with a loss in the ACC title game, Louisville plus two and a half. With that, my friend, I think we have covered it all on Three Dog Thursday. Anything else in closing, Gary Seegers? Uh, no, I think I think we're good. I uh, I wish that I had gotten in more this year, uh, but it's nice to be able to do you know the the final the, the championship win. You know, I'm I'm ready. I'm the book so, the bookends the bookends at the yes. beginning and at the end of the year, and you've gotten 100%. to catch up on a little sleep, and you got to catch up on a little more sleep because Friday and Saturday, bonkers to decide who the four teams are in the college football playoff. We find that out Sunday. And, uh, and then how do the New Year's Six Bowl game slot after that for all the matchups? Listen, my friend, thank you as always. We'll come back around one more time on Three Dog Thursday just before the New Year's Six games and the college football playoff at the end of December. For now, we are done with Championship Saturday before the barrage of bowl games that play at all different times, all different days, all over the place. We'll come back one more time again next month at the end of December. Gary, publicly again, thank you. Thank you for hanging, for letting me hang out on the platform on Winning Cures, winningcureseverything.com, the Winning Cures uh, YouTube page as well. Good luck with those underdog plays, my friend, and let's see and what happens. You. And to you. Hey, thanks for doing the show on the video uh, all year long. This has been a lot of fun. I think people have really enjoyed the content. You guys have a proven track record. All of your guests have come in, uh, performed well. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot has, of fun. I think the audience has, has enjoyed it. And we uh, and we love the relationship. Gary, thank you. We thank you all for watching. We thank you for listening. Again, this is not goodbye forever. It is goodbye until the New Year's Six Bowl games and the college football playoff. Once we have all of that in place and they get a little closer, we'll be back with another Three Dog Thursday. For now, keep, uh, keep in touch with Gary's content on Winning Cures. Everything, all the bowl games, the previews, all of it. Watch he and Parker and Kyle on BetUS TV. And again, we're back with Three Dog Thursday right at the end, right at the finish line. We'll come back in on podcast and on Winning Cures. For Gary Seegers, I'm TJ Reeves. Enjoy Championship Saturday. Woof, woof for Three Dog Thursday. <laughs>